me just knock this on first. Welcome to our BB and GB dedication and enrollment. How are the boys and girls this morning? Brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant to see you all here in church looking so well. A big welcome to all the family and friends and our church family here this morning who have gathered. As a church family, we are just really thrilled to have a BB and a GB associated with us. And it's just great to have everybody here this morning. Here in Island McGee, we are a church family who actually during this last year are amalgamating. You've maybe heard of First and Second Island McGee. Especially at the start of next year, we will be Island McGee. Presbyterian Church, and we are just um, yeah, thrilled that you're here with us this morning. You'd be really welcome every Sunday morning on their activities for kids, children, and young people every Sunday. And when we meet together as a church family, we come to worship God, we come to encourage each other to be part of a church community and to remind ourselves of who God is and what he's done for us, and hopefully today we'll be doing all those things as we come together to worship God today. But we are thinking about making promises today. Hands up, boys and girls, if you have, oh, wait, 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 wait for the question. Hands up if you've ever made a promise. Oh, I, I. Hands up, congregation, if you've ever made a promise. Yeah, I, I think we've all made promises at some time in our life. We all make promises, but probably a big question is, do we keep our promises? What kind of promises, boys and girls, have you ever made? Or Callum, have you ever made a promise? Mm. What do you think? Anybody think of a promise that they have made? Yeah, yeah. A promise in horse riding is that? Yeah, yeah. Anybody else make any promises? Yeah, yeah. You promised that you would be good, and I'll not ask if you kept your promise. Boys, any promises that you guys have made? No? Hmm, I'm sure at some time you have made a promise. No, mums and dads sometimes make promises. I, this is confession time, I have made a promise I made a promise that for one of my daughters, I would go and watch her play hockey. And it turned out one day that I didn't keep my promise. I broke my promise. And do you know what happened? Here's my promise. I broke it. Now, maybe you have promised to tidy your room or to do your homework, or to look after your little brother or sister. And you too made a promise, but you broke it. Maybe you broke your promise as well. And even, in, this is one for the mums and dads, even important people in our society, like prime ministers and presidents, sometimes they say they're going to do something, and they don't do it. And in time, we discover that they have broken their promises. Lots of broken promises. Sometimes we make promises. Sometimes we keep them. Sometimes we break them. Promises can be hard because we're not perfect. But this morning, we're going to discover that God never breaks his promises. God's promises are like this thick book. Oh, they can't be broken. Does anybody want to come up and see if they can break this book? Oh, here we go. Ian, you come up and we'll have a... a yeah, Danny, no. Do you think you're going to be able to... Oh, have a go, Ian, to see if you can break. Break it, go strong. No, not happening. Oh, this is the opportunity for the GB to beat the BB here. Go, Danny. Have a go, really. Anybody? Oh, oh. Oh, do you want to try a crappy trap? We'll try a crappy trap. Cry. Oof! Are you okay? Yeah. Should have done a uh, risk assessment on that one. Right, sir. 
but thank you so much. But God's promises cannot be broken. God is perfect, and He never breaks His promises. And that is what we are thinking about today: God's promises, and how He never breaks, always keeps His promises, and we can trust Him. And so, as we begin, we're going to pray that God would really encourage us as we think about God's promises to us today. Boys and girls, maybe. If you've been here before, you've maybe done the prayer job. We would do the prayer job, so we put our hands out, our arms out, we shake, we clap three times above the head, one, two, three, we bring our hands down, we close our eyes, and we close our mouths, and let's pray to God. Father God, we acknowledge that sometimes we can break our promises, but we pray that you would encourage us today that you never break your promises, that you are always faithful, He's loving towards us. And you keep your promises to be with us, to forgive us, that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Promises that you will be near to us. Promises that we can be your children. Father, today, encourage us as we worship together that you are a God, a faithful God, and a God who always keeps your promises to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, brilliant. Now, we're going to sing... A song that was all about God being a great big God who can keep his promises. Now, will we go for some actions? Catherine might come up on, or not. So our actions are, so our God is a great big God. I think loads of you guys will know this. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. Brilliant. And the actions for the verse, they're all very straight, straightforward. So we want to stand and sing together. Our God is a great big God. Let's stand together. Good morning to all your friends and your family. It is so good to see you here in church this morning. And this is an extra special morning for us because in a little while, you are going to make a promise to God. And that promise is about doing your best to love God and to tell other people all about him. So this morning, we are thinking about promises and I wonder Peter has chatted a little bit about it already but I wonder what exactly is a promise I wonder 
if anybody could have a go at explaining what is a promise, Cassie? Well done, when you promise to do something, that's a great answer. Anybody else have another way of explaining it too? Yeah. Well done, so you tell somebody you're going to do it, and then you do it. Well done. Well, I was thinking about this question, what is a promise? And I looked it up in the dictionary. And the dictionary said, a promise is a declaration that you will do something. So those were brilliant explanations. And there are promises all around us. People make promises every day. And sometimes when someone makes a promise, they give something to the other person as a sign of their promise. So sometimes when people make a promise, they give something to the other person as a sign of their promise. And this morning, I have got three signs of different promises, but I'm going to need some help. I wonder, can I pick three people to come up to the front and help me hold up these signs of the promise? Yes, would you like to come up? Yes, and would you like to come up? And we'll pick a girl. Cassie, would you like to come up? You had your hand up first. Will you come over here? And I will get these signs of a promise for you. And Cassie, oh dear, there's a wee step. You all right? Yeah. Well done. Will you stand here in a row? And I'm going to give you a sign of a promise. Would you hold that up really high, Cassie, to show everybody? What is that? What is that? Yeah. It's an envelope and it's got an address on it. I wonder what is the sign of a promise here? Do you know what it is? The stamp. The stamp is a sign of a promise because the stamp means that the postman or the postwoman is going to promise to deliver your letter rain or shine or snow and hopefully no strikes. They're going to promise to deliver your letter. That is a sign of a promise. No, I've got a special sign of a promise for you to hold up. Do you think you could keep that really safe? What is that? Anybody? Yeah. It's a bank card. And this is a sign of a promise because when you want to buy something, you take this to the till and this shows that you're promising that the money will come out of your bank account and you'll pay for what you want to buy. So that's another sign of a promise. Now, I've got a special one for you. What about on the screen? Can you do that with your two little fingers and hold it up really high? What is that? Does anybody know what that is? Yes, Willow. It's a pinky promise. Can I see everybody else do a pinky promise? A pinky promise might be a promise that we make of our friends when we promise to share our sweets with them or sit beside them in school. It is another sign of a promise. So we've got a stamp, we've got a bank card, and we've got a pinky promise. All show us that somebody has made a promise. But in the Bible, God also makes us promises. And just like a stamp, a bank card, and a pinky promise are signs of promises, God also gives us signs of his promise. And we're going to read and have fun learning about one of God's signs of his promise. So I'm going to say thank you to my three helpers. We'll give them a wee round of applause for thanking, for helping. And you go back to your seats. Thank you. Okay, Cassie. Well, this story that we're about to read is from the Bible. And you can read it in Genesis chapter 6 to 9. But we're going to read it from a storybook. And I'm really going to need your help because there's some actions and some sound effects that go with this story. So you have to listen really well. Yes. And it starts off by saying that God made the whole world, but the world started to not listen to God and to do what they wanted. So that made God very sad, sad, sad. Can I see the sad faces? God 
was very sad, 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 because the people were very bad, bad, bad. Can you see your thumbs down? The people were very bad, bad, bad. But God said to Noah, I'm going to splash, splash, splash them all away. Can I see you splash? Splash, splash, splash them all away. But because Noah and his family loved God, God promised that he was going to keep them safe, safe, safe. Well done. Can I see the boys do safe, safe, safe. Well done. So God told Noah to build a very big boat. And Noah did that. He went chop, chop, chop. Can I see you go chop, chop, chop? And he went bam, bam, bam. And bash, bash, bash. And what happened is Noah built a very, very big boat. And in this big boat, two of every kind of animal came to come onto the boat. Now, I need, this is where I really need your help. I need four boys and three girls. Robert, would you pick four boys for me to come up to the front? And Saskia, would you pick three girls to come up to the front? Yes. Brilliant. And just come and line up to the front. Great. And you come up this step. Up the way over here. You stand here. And the girls are lined up too. Well done. So we're thinking about all the animals that came onto the boat. So there was two of every kind. So you hold up your animal over your face like a mask. And we had two lions. Can I hear a lion sound effect? <laughs> well done. And we had two of, what is this? Two giraffes. What noise does a giraffe make? A bit like a horse. And nay, we'll hear it all together. Nay, we had two giraffes. And then what else came onto the boat is we had two elephants. You hold that up over your face. And can we do an elephant sound effect? Oh, very good with our trunks. And then right at the end, we had two little mice for Benjamin to hold up. That, what noise do mice make? Squeak, squeak, squeak. And it wasn't just these animals. It was every kind of animal. So it was a very noisy and probably a very smelly, smelly boat. So all the animals, they went onto the boat. And who else went onto the boat? Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. And when they went onto the boat, God shut the door and he kept them safe, safe. Safe. Can we see, do that together? Safe, safe, safe. And then the rain started to come down. And the rain went drip, drip, drip. And then it started getting louder. Drip, drip, drip. And heavier. Drip, drip, drip. Well done. And then the boat went up, up, up. Because the water was filling the earth. And I'm sure on the boat, the animals and Noah and his family were all rocking back and forth. Can I see the animals rocking back and forth like you're on a big boat? And the boys and girls, you rock back and forth too. I hope they weren't feeling too seasick. And God washed away everything that was bad, bad, bad. Well done. That was bad, bad, bad. But then... God kept his promise to Noah and his family, and he kept them all safe, 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 just as he had promised. And then the water, the rain stopped, and the water went gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Can I hear you do that? Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. And the water went down, because the rain had stopped. And the boat went thump, thump, plunk. Can you do that? Thump, thump, plunk. And it stopped and rested on top of a big mountain. 
And God told Noah that it was soon time to get off the boat. And Noah opened the door of the ark and he sent out lots of different birds. He sent out two kinds of birds. And their sound effects, which are a wee bit tricky to do. Kaka, kaka, who can do it? Kaka, kaka. And when one of the birds returned with a green leaf, Noah knew it was soon time to get off the ark. So he sent out another bird. And what did noise did the bird make? Kaka, kaka. And it never came back, so no, no one knew that it had found some dry land. And then it was time for all the animals and Noah and his family to get off the boat and into the nice, washed, clean world. And God had kept his promise to them that they were going to be safe, safe, safe. But... God made a very special promise that day. A special promise that he made saying that I promise to never splash, splash, splash the people away again. He said people will still be bad, 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 but I promise to never splash, splash, splash them away again. And God sent a sign of his promise, just like the stamp and the bank card, and the pinky promise, God sent a sign. Does anybody guess what was the sign of God's promise? Well done. It was a beautiful rainbow, and the rainbow reminds us that God always keeps his promises. And that's the first thing that we're going to learn today, and remember that our God makes lots of promises to us and our God always, always, always keeps his promises to us. Can I see you do that? Thumbs up and we'll say it together. God always, always, always keeps his promises to us. Well done. Thank you to all my helpers. And I'll collect in your animals and then we are going to sing a song together and it starts off about Noah and it starts off how Noah built the most enormous ark. So we're going to try and sing it together. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So we're going to stand up and we're going to sing all through history. Okay.
super duper singing and I'm just going to bring this little table out to help us in our next thing. Now I wonder, has anybody here broken anything? Have you ever broken anything? Well, I want to tell you a story about my most memorable day at school. I was in year eight. I was at Belfast High School. There I am all those years ago. And it was Friday afternoon. And it was PE. And I was really excited because we were doing athletics in the school hall. And on this day, we were learning how to do the high jump. Has any of the older BB and GB done the high jump before? Yeah, and it's really good. You get lined up and you run towards the bar and you jump and you propel yourself over the bar and you land on the mat. And this day, I was really excited because I lined myself up just right. I ran and I got over the bar. I hadn't touched the bar and I thought, yes, I've done it. But then... On my way down to the mat, I heard a big crunch and I ended up breaking a small bone in my arm. But, but, after PE, we were lined up to go to HE and to bake a cake. So I told my teacher I was okay so that I could go bake this cake. And it was after I baked the cake, a little bit funny like this, that I went to A&E and got the and got a sling. So I broke a little bone in my arm that day. I wonder, have you ever broken anything? You've broken your leg. That would have been very sore. Has anybody else? It doesn't have to be a bone. Have you ever broken anything? Have you, Danny? Oh, you broke a glass. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Anybody else broke anything special and precious? You broke your... You broke your toe. Oh, that's very sore. So lots of things break. We break bones. We break glasses and phases. Maybe our cars break down or our jewellery can break. Lots of things get broken. But today, we're thinking about something else that can get broken. And Peter already explained to us that our promises can be a bit like paper, human promises. So maybe you promise that you'll sit beside your friend at break time and you break that promise. That was easily broken. Maybe you promise to sh share your sweets with your friend, but you end up eating them all yourself. That's an easy promise broken. Maybe you promise that you'll help your mum or dad hide your room and you don't do it in the end because you can't be bothered, that's another broken promise. Or maybe for some of us in here, we are the ones that break the promise to somebody else and we do it very easily. And for a lot of us in here, grown-ups too, we know what it's like to break promises or to have promises broken on us. Broken promises between friends, Broken promises between family. Broken promises in our relationships. Humans find breaking promises a really easy thing to do. And even God knows about broken promises. Because right at the start of the Bible, the two people, Adam and Eve, they made a promise to God, which they broke when they went and ate fruit from the one tree they promised not to. It is so easy to break promises. And I wonder, for some of us in here today, are we really fed up in being used to people breaking their promises on us? And we're fed up living amidst all these broken promises. But as Peter said, God always, always, always keeps his promises. And God's promises to us are in the Bible. And Peter's already done it today. We looked, like, well, looked at the same thing. It's so easy to break our promises. But can I break this? You tried to do it earlier. Sure you couldn't. You can't do it. And that helps us remember that even though people's promises are really easily broken, God's promises are never broken. 
And do you know something? The Bible tells us in Numbers 23, verse 19, that God is no mere human. It means he's not like us. He doesn't tell lies or change his mind. God always, always, always keeps his promises. And in the Bible, that's where we find all of God's promises to us. And who can read that number on the screen? It's a big number. Yeah, do you want to have a go? 7,487. That's a lot of promises that God has made to us. And you'll notice this morning that we have this rainbow. And on this rainbow is all different promises that God has made to us. And at the end of today, when you go out the back door, you're going to be able to take a promise from the rainbow and on the other side, it's a promise that God has made to you. And there's 250 promises on this rainbow. But remember, the Bible tells us there's 7,487 7, promises. That would be 30 of these notice boards lined up. 30 of these notice boards would show us all of God's promises to us. But, but, we live in a world full of human broken promises. How can we be sure, how can we be sure that God keeps his promises to us? How can we be sure? Well, first of all, we're going to look at what these promises are. And I wonder, what is the first promise we're going to look at in the Bible? What is this? A heart? Would somebody come up and hold this heart? Yeah? I'll pick somebody that hasn't been up. Have you been up yet? No, you come up and hold this heart. And this heart reminds us that God tells us that no matter who you are, you are loved with an everlasting love by God. Well done, you hold that up nice and high. And I'm going to ask a girl, Anna, would you like to come up? And we'll find out what is the next promise that we're looking at in the Bible. Because remember, these are all from the Bible. You hold that up, Anna. What do you think that looks like? It's two hands she's holding, isn't it? And that reminds us of God's promise when he tells us that you're never alone because we're, he is with us always. That's another amazing promise that God makes to us. And I need one more person. It's going to be fastest hands up. Willow, you had the fastest hand there. And the last promise we're going to look at today from the Bible, and we've got two willows, so you both come up. You both come up and hold it. You stand in the middle, and you can hold one end, and you hold the other end. Well done. What does that say? Yes, Danny. Hope, because the Bible tells us that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus that when we believe in him, we can have eternal life. So these are just three of God's promises to us, that he loves us, that he's always with us, and that we can have hope and a future in him. So thank you for holding these up. You go back to your seat. And we're just going to finish now by thinking about how can we be sure that God's promises to us, that he will keep them? How can we be sure when we're in a world full of broken promises by people how can we be sure that God will keep his promise? Well, just like God sent a rainbow to Noah as a sign of his promise, just like the stamp and the debit card and the pinky promise were all signs, God has sent us another sign of his promise. And this is the important bit. And I'm only going to speak for one minute. Okay. And the sign of God's promise was... Can anybody read the name on the screen? Who can read it? Jesus. God saw that the world was full of broken promises and broken people and people who had turned against God. But God said, I promise I'm going to fix that. And he sent Jesus, his beloved and perfect son, into the broken world. And Jesus loved people 
and he told them about God, but what he did shows us the greatest promise that God has for us. Jesus went on to die on the cross for all of the broken promises, for all of our brokenness and wrongdoing and our sin, but that wasn't the end of Jesus' story because God brought him back to life. And when we trust in Jesus, we can be sure of all of God's promises, that we can know that he loves us, that he's always with us, and we can have that eternal life with him later in heaven. So Jesus was a sign that God keeps all of his promises to us, and we can be sure, get your thumbs up ready, we can be sure that God always, always, always keeps his promises. And no matter who we are, no matter what people have said to us or done to us or how we feel, we can be sure that in Jesus, we can live our lives on God's promises, all 7,487 of them. And we're going to pray now before we do some more singing. And to pray, I've got a prayer up on the screen. And I wonder if we could say the bits that are really bold together. We'll we try that together. And all the mums and dads and everybody here can help us. So we'll do a prayer drill. And we'll put our hands out and clap three times. But we'll not close our eyes because we're looking at the screen. And I will pray to God and say, Heavenly Father, thank you that you're the God who loves us in the good times. Help us to hold on to your promises. God who helps us in the hard times, help us to hold on to your promises. God who never lets go of us, help us to hold on to your promises. God who is bigger than all of our fears, help us to hold on to your promises. And God who is always with us, no matter what, help us hold on to your promises. In Jesus' name, Amen. And at the very end, everybody is going to walk past this rainbow of promises when they go out the door. And we really want to encourage you, no matter what age you are, to take a little promise from the board and to read it on the back. And we want to encourage you this week to remember God's promises for you when we trust in Jesus. Okay? I'm going to hand over to Peter. Yes, brilliant. Boys and girls, you have been really good at listening. And we're nearly at the end of our service, nearly at the point of our en enrollment. But just before that, just some announcements for our church family, and then we'll be doing our enrollment. Just to inform um, our church family of, of the death of William Ross. Many of you will already have, have heard that, his funeral was, was yesterday, but I'd really commend William's family to your prayers um, in the coming week. That's to Pat and, and the family. So do be praying for the Ross family circle at this time. Um, just a, a, a final reminder just about our, our membership classes that are beginning this afternoon at three o'clock downstairs in, in the long room. A um, number of people have spoken to me about that or hoping to join us. If you haven't spoken to me, please do speak to me, maybe after the service, or join us this afternoon, 3 o'clock, downstairs in the long room. Just a reminder about the Congregational Committee meeting, 8 o'clock, London Halls, on Thursday night. And then finally, as part of our service next Sunday, we're going to have a short congregational meeting for both congregations as part of our service next Sunday, and just to make you aware of that. And then... I nearly forgot, on Tuesday night, 7.30 downstairs in the long room is our monthly prayer meeting. So please, everybody's very welcome to our monthly church family prayer meeting, 7.30 on Tuesday night in the long room. If you can stay for refreshments, please do. The boys and girls are going to leave and head across to the hall and pick up their coats. That's where you can pick them up from, um, parents, grandparents, over in the hall. But if you can, come back and join us for refreshments. You'd be really welcome. Now, boys and girls, members of our GB and BB, you have been so good at listening. And just we're going to close our service by 
having our vows and our enrollment, and then we're going to be singing a song. So we're nearly there. You've done so well. But we have before us the 49th Northern Ireland First Island McGee GB Group, and we have our first Mark Do Boys Brigade Company, and we've come for our enrollment and dedication service today. But before we come to the boys and girls and our, and our young people, the organizations before us cannot run without the dedication, the energy, the commitment of the leaders who are here. And at a time many organizations are struggling for leaders, we are indebted to those who are about to take premises before us. And a big thank you from our church family here in Isle McGee. And so I'm going to ask the leaders to stand when their name is mentioned. And so in the GB, Claire Rush, Laura McDonald, who can be here this morning, Denise Apsley, Kathy Smith, Jade Smith, Saskia Montgomery, and Catherine Dixon. And then in our Boys Brigade company, Robert Smith, Stephanie Smith, Yuri Souza, Nicola Kane, Hilary Marsden, and then our helpers, Callum, who couldn't be here this morning, and Esther Bova. You will spend many hours in a work that I trust will bring much fulfillment, but yet not without its problems. Always remember that in your work as leaders in the BB and GB that God has promised, as we've just been thinking about, promised to be with you at all times. And if the leaders and young people come to make their promises, it's good to just remind us all of the aims of both the BB and the GB. And the object of the Boys Brigade is this, the advancement of Christ's kingdom among boys and the promotion of habits of obedience, reverence, self-respect, and all that tends towards true Christian manliness. And the aim of the Girls' Brigade is this, to help girls become followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and through self-control, reverence, and a sense of responsibility to find true enrichment of life. And so to the leaders, realizing the call of Christ, the responsibility of this role, and guided by the aims of the Boys' Brigade and the Girls' Brigade, do you promise by word and example to serve these organizations in order that young lives might be transformed and God's world enriched. Thank you. I know you enroll you as leaders on behalf of this church family. Promise to support you by our prayers and cooperation so that the aims of the BB and GB will grow and flourish. May God grant you grace to be faithful to your calling and crying your work with success. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, girls, young people, boys, it's come to the important part in our service that you've come together. As young people, you're going to stand to take your promise. And we believe that the BB and the GB are organizations encouraging you to be a follower of Jesus who guides and guards our journey of life, who loves you with an endless love. And we are just so pleased that you've chosen to come along faithfully to our GB and our BB. And so I'm going to ask you to stand. Girls, do you want to stand? And boys, do you want to stand? And I'm about to ask you a question. And at the end of the question, I would love for you to say, we are. So we'll have a lot of practice, okay? So after three, say we are. One, two, three. We are. Oh, brilliant. So here we go with the question, with the promise. Are you willing to be a faithful member of the Boys Brigade or the Girls Brigade, seeking to follow God and showing God's love in your words and actions to other boys and girls? Brilliant. Well, I now enroll you as members of the BB and the GB. I pray that God would give you strength to be an important part of the group and by God's grace to be a follower of Jesus and to serve him in your life. Please be seated. Brilliant. I want to encourage you that the leaders are appointed by the church, this congregation, and the responsibility to support them, to pray for them. I'd really encourage you as a congregation to remember the BB and GB in your prayers. But I want to pray for us all, for our companies today. Let's, let's pray together. 
Father God, we want to thank you for each and every young person who has stood before you today. We thank you for how they are unique. They are individuals, for how they have so much to give and so much to bring to these youth organizations. And we pray, Father, that as they come each week, that they would have fun and laughter, that they would know safety and security, that they would learn many new things, develop new skills, and most of all, that they would hear about Jesus and how he can be their friend and savior. Father, we thank you for the officers, the leaders, the helpers, for the time and energy that they bring. Father, we pray that you would give them vision and excitement, that they would know that you are with them each and every BB or GB night. And Father, we commit the year ahead to you for the plans and preparations that they have made. Father, may you be at work in these organizations for your glory from the youngest to the oldest. And Father, thank you for our church family. And we pray, Father, that we would know your blessing in these days. And we thank you for each and every one who has come to be with us this morning. Father, may we all leave encouraged that you never break your promises. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Boys and girls, you have been super this morning. Thank you to Catherine and all that we have learnt about God's promises to us. But we're going to close our service by standing to sing, Be Thou My Vision. Let's stand and sing. Can I just thank you for coming and being with us this morning, for supporting the BB and GB. It's greatly appreciated. I'm going to pray, and then the BB and the GB are going to head out. What we're going to do is BB are going to go into the two wee small back rooms, and maybe could they go out that fire exit, Robert? So Robert will be standing waving at the parents of the BB and usher them a little bit further down at the side door, and then we'll not get rid of the BB. Let them go home or come back in the refreshments, and then the GB can be picked up from the, the, main, the main hall. But if you can, you'd be most welcome to come back into the church for refreshments. So let me pray for us as we've closed our service. Father, we thank you for your promises to us, promises that you go with us, that you never leave us. Father, may each of us know your grace going with us today, and a reminder of your love for us in Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.